Hey, what's up? This is Piggy D from Rob Zombie, and you're watching Brett12.com. His old bass player, Blasco, um, was a good friend of mine, and um, we used to write together and hang out, and uh, he called me up one day, and he's like, hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna join Ozzy's band, um, you might wanna take over for me. And I was a guitar player, I've been a guitar player my whole life, and, uh, and he's like, he's like, ah, oh, it's easy, you got two less strings and a pick. I was like, fine, cool, got it, and that was it. I mean, Wednesday was a kind of a unique example because I I, uh, I was really just a touring guy. Like I didn't really write or anything for Wednesday. Uh, same with Amen. I was really just a touring guy with that band. So um, you know, Rob kind of lets me express myself in different ways. You know, I can. You know, uh, I'm a very visual guy too. I'm a very visual performer, I guess. So he kind of gives me the outlet to, you know express my identity a little bit through more through the show so that's that's a huge difference because he, Rob's such an artistic guy and he gets it he gets that he's got four guys in the band that all kind of have their own identity and their own thing going on and he lets us kind of celebrate that so that's really cool you know I heard a great quote the other day they said that you know, a lot of people say they're a different person on stage. I really don't think I am as frightening as that probably is for especially my wife to hear. But, uh, y you know, I, I feel like I'm, I'm exactly the same person. I just, if I'm on seven right now, I get to be on 11 for an hour. And, um, you know, it may, I, I love theatrics. I grew up, I grew up listening to musicals and, and, and watching plays and a lot of films and stuff like that so I've always loved costumes I've always loved different kinds of music I've always loved art I've always loved makeup and and uh, playing dress up I guess so um, you know it's just who I am it's what I it's what I would do behind closed doors with no one watching only I get to do it with way too many people watching I had a weird upbringing because I had a brother that was into, an older brother that was into Kiss and Van Halen and Blue Oyster Cult and bands like that. And my parents were into like old gospel and country music and musicals. Yet I love, by myself, I kind of discovered like film scores. Like I got into like John Williams stuff. So I had like My Fair Lady and Oklahoma and South Pacific and Fiddler on the Roof. And then I had Kiss Alive 2 and and Van Halen too, and uh, Dolly Parton's greatest hits, and Johnny Cash, and I would listen to all of it, and I never, I never discriminated, and I still don't. I still listen to everything. And you know, when I started getting into guitar playing, especially, I would try to pick out those songs and try to pick out those melodies. And I mean, that, playing guitar is a whole nother, a whole nother ball of influences, but that's kind of where it started. Not much. Uh, I'm using a, a hard key kilo amp now. We've got four of those running. Um, some 812 cabs that are just monstrous cabs. Uh, Dean Markley strings, which I've only been with him for a couple of tours now and I love them. Made a big difference. Um, especially my tech loves it too because he doesn't have to change the strings very often. <laughs> and uh, I'm using an MXR full bore pedal on a couple songs. I've been looking for, you know, Rob's music sometimes calls for different bass tones and sometimes calls for a heavier, grittier tone. And I've never found a bass distortion pedal that actually worked for me that didn't give me a whole bunch of squealing. So um, that's been great to have, in, especially on this tour. And I'm still using my Fender B basses. Uh, I've got all the EMGs in them now and they sound amazing. And uh, I just picked up two new ESP guitars for this tour, some custom guitars that are uh, just amazing in their own right like everything's I found finally found 
basses that fit the specific songs. You know, not just basses that would visually exciting, but actually tonally fit the songs. So. I played Gibson for a long time. When it, in Amen, I used to play Gibsons, but being in that band was like living in a car accident 24 hours a day. So I had to stop bringing the Gibsons out because I lost one headstock one night and I was like, that's it. No more custom less balls on stage. So uh, I started using, uh, I started using, uh, God, what did I have? What did I play? Oh, I had some ESPs. Uh, I started using a, a Flying V ESP that I loved a lot, and um, I love the shape of it. And uh, Gibson Explorer, I played a lot too. That was a big guitar for me. Amps, um, I used a Marshall JCM 900, the 100 watt, for, that was my, that's my main guitar, it always has been. Um, sometimes with a power break, sometimes without. But I just, I just love that amp, I always have. You know what? I, uh, I've, I've been getting a lot into scoring and electronic music, so I actually left the guitar at home and got a, uh, a Samson actually just sent me, uh, it's called the Graphite uh, 25. It's a MIDI controller. So I've been, I've been really studying a lot of like 1980s scores, like even like the John Carpenter stuff, and really playing with like synth sounds and stuff. I've been really getting into that lately. This is the first tour I left my guitar at home. So I, I sold you guys out, sorry. That's, that's a long story. The first time I saw someone hold a guitar that made sense to me. I had guitars all over my house. My family was actually a band before I was born. So I had guitars all around the house, but I never knew what to do with them. I'd pick them up and I'd wear them like a necktie and I'd be like, this sucks. I saw Johnny Ramone one time on MTV playing a guitar and he was playing that most right. He was playing it real low and I was like, that's how that goes. Now it makes sense. And then I saw Alice Cooper when I was 14 and I was like, well, that's what I want to do. So I'll take Johnny Ramone's guitar posture and whatever Alice Cooper's doing and then I'll smush the two together. And then this is where it got weird. My favorite punk band when I was in junior high was a band called the Goo Goo Dolls. And they were a punk band like real punk and so that's how I got into punk rock. But then I grew up with that band and started studying Johnny Resnick's guitar playing and he never uses the same tuning. He's always experimenting with alternate tunings. And that just kicked the door wide open for me. So then I started experimenting with tunings and writing with those tunings. And now it's affected everything that I play every zombie song in a different tuning. Like, just because of economizing the way I play it. There's, you know, John and I don't, we play a couple of songs in the same tuning, but like, for the most part, I've been able to change it so I can focus more on the performance and not have to make the runs that I would normally have to make in standard tuning. So, I actually owe a lot to Johnny Resnick because had I not discovered alternate tunings via him, you know, my life may not be as easy as it is now. <laughs> so thanks, John. Um, it's been, it's been pretty much the same up until this last record. This last record, he really got, he got out of LA. He wanted to make the record, you know, without any distractions. And it came together in record time. I think it came together in two months from start to finish. And, uh, we all had songs. I had songs from two records ago that were still in the pile of songs. And, you know, one of those made the record this time. Um, so it, it's funny, man. It just... It's whatever he connects to lyrically that he feels, that he feels like he has something to say about, and that seems to be the way it goes, you know, so. That's, he has like a studio on his property, right? He does now, yeah. So he's all camped out there. Right? Yeah, yeah. Normally, when, like, when we tracked Hellbilly Deluxe 2, John and Tommy and I recorded all those songs live. We would rehearse the songs, play the songs three times, and that was it. We were always there. I was always there when John was doing overdubs. If Tommy had to go in and fix something, I was there. 
This time it was different. We 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 came in separately. John was around a little bit when I tracked some bass, but he wasn't there the whole time, which is the first time that's ever happened. So it kind of allowed us to not have someone breathing over our shoulder and be like, let me try this. Let me just goof around instead of being like, okay, we're on the clock, we gotta go to lunch. Like, you know, hurry up, time is money. It, it kind of allowed me to like flex my muscles a little bit more and I, I like that. One of my first loves was, was horror films, and always has been. Um, but I have weird tastes with horror films. I, I like different, different movies and for different reasons. Um, I have a hard time connecting with a lot of the newer stuff these days. I, I, I go see everything, because I, I just, I'm looking for that, I'm like a junkie, I'm looking for that, that fix, and I, I'm almost always left, let down. But last night in my bunk, I was watching Horror Hotel, which I've seen probably 300 times. And every time I watch it, I notice something I didn't see before. And it's one of those old, weird black and white movies they probably made for 10 bucks, you know? And, but every time I watch it, I'm like, God, every scene is so perfectly lit. Like, I, 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 st I love getting into a movie like that and just studying it and just rolling around in it. Does that stuff lead uh, through onto your persona at all in ways? On stage? Absolutely, absolutely. You know, it's... I probably spend way too much time getting ready for each show because I'm just so detail oriented. And then it's gone in two songs and it doesn't matter. But I enjoy the process. Because I got so into Alice Cooper when I was a kid, for some reason Alice has just kept coming back into my life in different ways that I could never have predicted. And, um, I had an opportunity, we wrote, I, I've directed videos for him, I've made clothes for him, I've done album art for him, I've done all this stuff, and we, I had an idea to write a song one time, and I called him up, I'm like, hey, let's write a Halloween song, you've never done a Halloween song. So we did it, we did it in a week, and then it was on iTunes like the next week, and everybody loved it. I was like, oh, this is fun. And he called me up and he's like, hey, let's do a record. So I went to his house, and we, with a, a writing buddy of mine, Dave Pino, and we set up a studio in his living room and just started recording an Alice Cooper record. And we got like 12 songs. And what was so interesting is that I've spent so much time of my, uh, so much years of my life studying him and studying his music and his ups and downs and his style changes and all of this stuff that when it came time to use it, I had all of that information and I was like, oh, this kind of sounds like that song from that record. And he was like, yeah, totally. And we would be sitting there writing lyrics and, and it was like I was very comfortable being in that skin because it, I'd spent so much time doing the research, you know what I mean? So um, I still have that record. It's in the can. Um, it hasn't come out yet. But uh, that, was a, that was a unique experience, you know, probably something that, you know, might not ever happen again in my life. but. The things that you celebrate the most always find a way to reward you in some weird way. You know, it's great. We're playing for new people. We're playing for fans of all the other bands that are here. And that's not something we would normally get the chance to do. The first couple of shows, we were like, oh, wait a minute. These people don't know the songs. Oh my God, what are we doing? And then it was like, wait, this is awesome. Like, you know, I meet kids every day at, at the out at the merch tent that are like, this is my first show. Not my first zombie, zombie show, this is my first show ever. And I go, oh my God, if I saw this show when I was your age, there'd be no hope for me. So, <laughs> be all downhill from there. So, it's exciting. It's exciting, we're having a lot of fun. Never got